put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Expendable 3, move with you. The gang are at it again. This one opens with them freeing Snipes from a prison train and he comes out looking like freaking Hannibal Lecter and he's, he's seriously creepy for the first little bit of this. He has a lot of great moments and he's yeah, I, I shouldn't give away too much, but as you maybe see hints of in the trailer, he and Lee have this thing of, you know, both of them have known Barney for a really long time, both of them are good with knives, and yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a rivalry going on there, and that's a lot of fun, and, and Statham and Snipe. They're, they're charming and likable and really, really cool. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a slight digression. Basically, the team has to take down a target. And they don't know... They think they know who it is, but they don't know. The person that they're supposed to take out is Mel Gibson's character. Stone Banks. He is an ex expendable, pendable, and he, he basically helped start the whole expendable thing. And yeah, he he was left for dead. And the basically he didn't think that the expendables were still out there. And the Expendables thought that he was dead, but now that they know of each other, he is determined to just take down the Expendables, any means necessary. So it's very much this personal thing, and Mel Gibson as a villain is a ton of fun. So, Barney lays off basically the entire old team to make way for the new team hoping to inject the the you know the franchise I mean the, the organization of the expendables with some some young blood and he you know he manages to find the the you know some huge cliches just in in shiny new you know bodies and yeah, then he tries with them to take down Stone Banks, but <laughs> we basically know how this goes. Some one way or another, the old gang are going to get back into, you know, yeah, and that's that's basically it for the plot and. There are good parts to this. I think I I would prefer to to get into some of those because this isn't this isn't completely pointless to sit through. Okay, so basically, when you just have two of these icons face to face and they have some conflict, that is gold. One of the you know, one of the best elements of this is when you have Sly and Mel just face to face. There's this one scene in a vehicle where they're just right up, and it's it's is incredibly tense. And 
there are also some great moments, and you know that's very much this antagonistic, you know, good guy, good good guy, bad guy thing. But also some of the other, some some more, you know, you've already gone into the rivalry thing between Steins and Lee. You have Harrison Ford who replaces Bruce Willis's church character because he wanted too much money. Willis did. So Ford comes in to be the new CIA, you know, liaison and basically Sly and Ford have this kind of I mean when when Sly comes back and I mean he didn't he didn't manage to kill Stonebanks on that first attempt and he's like you didn't tell me who I was up against. And Ford is like, you, you knew exactly what we knew. And it's this great, I mean, <laughs> Ford can act. And Sly, he used to be able to act. There's, there's, there's a lot of real tension there and, yeah, real intensity. When the, this, this gets a lot of good from the new edition. And with that, I am mainly referring to Snipes, Banderas, and Gibson. I will get into the the, the new brood, the new breed, yeah. But yeah, whenever at least one of those are on screen, which is not anywhere near enough, you're having fun. You know, Snipes. Basically, with both Snipes and Banderas, it's this thing of the outsider trying to get back in. And Snipes, it's this thing of he was in prison for all these years, and now that he's coming back, he already was on the team, but none of the guys that are now on the team knew him back then. So, yeah, he's, he's kind of trying to get back into that. And, yeah, and with Banderas... This is the thing, I've, of the various reviews that mention him, it seems to be very much a love him or hate him kind of thing. I love him. He never shuts up. If, if he's on screen, possibly even if not on screen, if he is in the vicinity of the scene, he does not shut up. He is constantly going on and on about anything, everything, all the time. And it is so much fun. He is so... He's, he's almost sort of flamboyant. He's like one of the first scenes you see him in. He is introduced just, you know, what's it called? Jumping and, you know, yeah, just doing the, the Assassin's Creed jumping thing. Yeah, down from all up above. And then he gets turned down. He wants to join the team, but he gets turned down. And he, like, does, you know, this weird, almost dance move kind of thing. And he spins around yelling about, why won't anybody hire me to kill people? It's what I'm good at. And it's just, yeah, he's, he's so much fun. And, yeah, it's, you know, there's so much energy with both with him and with Snipes. When Snipes and Lee are, you know, doing the ongoing rivalry thing. And and when I mean Mel Gibson, he's he's just enjoyable to watch. And he is just owning being this just complete you just hate this guy from when you first see him. It's, it's one of those love-to-hate villains. He, he's just, he's great. Every single frame. Like, one of the first scenes is literally just him going and buying overpriced art to satisfy his girlfriend. And it's just, yeah, he's, he oozes just, yeah, the, the guy has a screen presence. And when one of those, when, when, when none of the three of them 
them are on screen, the movie really suffers. I suppose... Let me, let me briefly address the PG-13 thing. Yeah, it's very noticeable. Is, I mean, the, the first two, you had people blowing up, you know, blood from, from just nothing, you know. In this one, not so much. There's, there's basically no blood. You know, like, people are just shot and they fall down really quickly. There's still a ton of people dying. There's still a ton of people getting shot and blown up and such. But, yeah, you know, if you go into it, this doesn't have anywhere, you know, anything resembling the gore and violence of the first two. Overall, I, I don't think it... It doesn't completely change. It takes the edge off the, the action, but it isn't like, you know, it doesn't completely change what they get to do with the action. They still do, you know, some pretty... Yeah, some some big gags. And yeah, I suppose to to briefly comment on some of the other members of the cast. Lee is barely in this to the point where you could you could remove him completely, and the, you wouldn't be able to tell that he wasn't. Yeah, and it doesn't even, the movie doesn't even. Actually, you, you, you want to see them fight, but nope. <laughs> There's another prominent character from the first two who doesn't have a lot of screen time in this, and I, I shouldn't really give away who, but it's a real loss. Makes you wonder why they bother to bring him in the first place. They were just gonna cut me deep on that one. But yeah, I suppose that Kelsey Grammer's fun enough. He you know he's believable as this, you know, aging badass kind of he, he helped put the team together. And I guess that pretty much does it. I already mentioned a little bit. He's a lot of fun. He's really, I mean, he's got that gruff, you know, in charge kind of thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Robert W. does not have anywhere near enough screen time in this. And I bet, I, I think that pretty much covers, yeah, so the new team. Basically, once the, you know, I guess pretty much the, the middle third or so of the film is focused on the new team with Snipe, with Sly going around recruiting, aided by Kelsey Grammer, who picks people. And, yeah, it's, it's, very much the kind of thing that you expect from the from this kind of sequence. He sees what they can do. You know, he meets them, sees what they can do. Okay, on to the next one. And then after all that, we get a mission with them. And they're they're pretty decent. I mean, they're they're not necessarily the actors. I mean, maybe especially the the woman, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, R Rouser, I, I want to say Rouser, I mean no disrespect, but I don't really follow martial arts kind of thing, you know, so don't kick me, kick my ass, Rouser, Rousedower, Rousedower really has this, she kind of has two facial expressions, like she's either like, you know, rolling her eyes, or she's doing this kind of, you know, 
masculine, one of the guys kind of grin thing. Yeah. She's not real an act, real an act, really an actor, and it shows. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the team isn't bad. The you know, I already mentioned that they're incredibly cliche. I mean, you have the guy who doesn't take orders, but you know, maybe there's still some you know, and they, and and she's the the you know woman who's out to prove that she's just as good as the guys, and it, yeah, they're 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 pretty stock. I I will say I mean. Could kind of tell them apart, which I mean, again, I don't really follow. I, I haven't really seen any of these people outside of this movie, and the three guys don't look that dissimilar to each other. But yeah, I could sort of pick them apart, even you know, with how little character development personality they had. They, yeah, they they work pretty decently as a unit, and they each have a sort of a function within the team. It's not just each of them has, you know, the same stuff like it is with Expendables. And, yeah, I mean, the, the what it really comes down to is the, the section of the film that is about them is essentially a modern spy film. And that right there tells you the problem with the kids. Because in spite of everything positive that I've just said about, which I stand by, they are not expendables, plain and simple. Their, their portion of the movie is not an expendables movie. And it's really, I didn't want this franchise to fail. I certainly didn't want them to you know, I, I didn't want this to happen, but it's, it's sadly, it is kind of predictable. I, I really do kind of wish that they just, from the start, had gone with, you know, okay, these young, you know, up and coming action heroes, you know, you know, take them under, you know, Sly takes one under his wing or something, you know, Frodoche pushes him to the forefront and says, this is the new, you know, this is my, uh, you know, this is the guy I want to take over for me. Instead of just this thing of, you know, okay, we might be senior citizens, but we still kick ass, you know. I can appreciate that they, you know, they still have the muscle and such, but you can really tell that they're getting on in years, but but yeah, still what what I this thing of bringing in young people to I mean it kind of one of the things that that Sly said right from the start was that Expendables was in the the franchise was supposed to combat combat this thing of new action movies where the the action hero is a young, pretty boy who, you know, just sort of stands there, not, not a lot of physicality, and the effects sell that this is a badass. And then you go and cast, I think Kellen Lutz is the name from, from Twilight. Again, he does actually he gets physical in this. It's not. I'm. I'm not saying that he shouldn't at all be an action star, but yeah, I. I do kind of. Yeah, and and again, regardless, Expendables, as it was, as it, as it has been established, was not about bringing in young people to. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I feel like it's, it's the spin-off, you know, uh, you have a show and then it has one episode which is 
clearly the pilot for a spin-off. I wouldn't mind watching the spin-off. I'd like to see, I mean, I, I you know, throw Tom Cruise in there, you've got a Mission, a Mission Impossible movie. I, I'd watch that, you know, you've got a hacker, you've got, I swear the other three had, had like, different jobs or it seemed to make sense at the time, but at least you've got a hacker and, you know, the others, they, they know what they're doing. That's actually, that's another part of the thing here is there's a lot of stuff. I mean, when you go to this movie, uh, when you go to a movie that's supposed to be this big 80s throwback, you expect, you know, OTT action, not just a lot of stealth stuff. There's there's very little OTT action in this. The, the climax does have some, but without giving away exactly how or why, it is it is very, very they basically stole the climax from a different movie. So Now, I thought it was funny, Randy Couture said in interviews that in this he really has something to do, you know, he's the glue that holds the team together, and you get this idea that you, you get to see more of him, nope, doesn't happen, he, he has about as much personality or as many lines as he did in the second one, I'm not in the first one, he was he had this kind of neurotic thing. That didn't even really come into play here. There's the, the movie has far too many characters. To yeah, I, I don't even know why they kept around. But yeah, someone like Couture because he doesn't really have anything. I mean, with with Christmas, you have both the Link, or you know Barney, both Christmas and. Dr. Death, Snipes' character, are longtime friends of Barney's and knife-wielding allies of his. So you have that rivalry between the two of them and this whole thing. Dolph does get some funny stuff. Yeah, just overall, there's not really a lot for the various characters to do, as usual. And now there's just even more of them that, yeah, and they, they also don't have that much, you know, separate identity, you know, again, that the younger ones do have a little bit more of that, but, yeah, now, I, action tends to be over too quickly. The, it's just very much like you've seen the trailers, the, the you know, the them stopping, the, or them rescuing Snipes from the train. From the trailer, you get the idea that that's going to be a scene that takes a little while. It's over in just no time. And okay, on to the next one. And I mean, there are barely any set pieces in this that are, I mean, uh, that, that first one is a little interesting with them going up on this, you know, armed train in their one helicopter, and then the, you know, when they attack Stonebanks, the, you know, part of the attack is them in this suspended cargo container. Also, a cool idea, other than that, there's not really anything particular. You know, beyond that, it's just shooting, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, that's about it. It's, 
Yeah, it's it's not very memorable. And I will say the there are some you know epic shots of the action, maybe especially in that. This one confirms that the CIA people who want to contact Sly, they hide out in a vehicle of his and just wait around for him. I, I like to imagine that, you know, somewhere in, you know, Sly's beaten up old car that he never actually uses, there's some poor CIA intern just sitting in the back seat, certain that his supervisor told him, Barney will be here in a minute. So just, yeah. The the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff is done in close-up. I thought we got this out of our system with the first one. The second one did so well, actually. From what I can tell, which is not a lot, Rao's Hour is great at fighting in this, but we're never allowed to see it. It's way too close, way too, you know, quickly cut, cut, yeah, swiftly cut. And yeah, you just, you lose so much, and it's really too bad. Now, the dialogue. A little of it is actually not awful. Most of it is awful. I <laughs> props to Gibson for actually <laughs> infusing some some life and some energy into these incredibly dumb and not even well written dumb dumb lines. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to see Snipes doing action again. I wasn't entirely sure. I, I tried to see, to see, I mean, with Blade Trinity and beyond, the guy kind of seemed to just phone in his performances. A lot of the stuff that his character does in this might just be a stunt guy. I really hope that he you know, I mean, he's out of prison, having a chance to, I mean, it's, it's sly, it's the gang. I want to believe that he was the one who did it, not some stuff in here. Or at least if he, if he can. That's right, Snipes, I'm calling you out. Prove that you're still, you were the guy who was, who's, Martial arts moves were too fast for the cameras when filming Demolition Man. I'm sure you you still got it. Come on now. Yeah. The puns are horrible. They are just absolutely devastatingly unfunny and awkward. Which actually some of the humor in general is awkward. And they're, they're trying, they're really trying. Now, the, and the drama in this just does not work. And it's again, it's not what we paid to see. It's, we're, we're really busy. Yeah, they, they, between, you know, with the drama and the you know, the, the younger expendables. <laughs> yeah, this is not what we paid to see, guys. I suppose that more or less covers it. I will
will say that it wasn't too much like handheld shaky cam kind of thing on the action in general. The action in general, outside of the the hand to hand combat, you can see what's going on. You know, keeping in mind that any time someone dies, it's bloodlessly, and they maybe just fall over really quickly. The movie is two hours, where the others were around ninety minutes. And it feels it. There are just, it has way too much to try to do. And it doesn't really, yeah, uh, so much time spent on the new team when, yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like they're hijacking the, the movie. And, Yeah, I I would I would watch their movie, but you know, not not during an Expendables movie. I suppose. Yeah, not too much. Hours. And there's you know the usual problems in logic. some of the ones in the first two. And certainly this one, I mean, the first one had a huge climax. The second one had a huge opening. This one never has something that's quite that big. The, the climax, I think, wants to be that, but yeah, it, it really is. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.